Transnet Freight Rail recently announced increased capability to export manganese. But there are other developments as well. Public Enterprises Minister Praveen Gordon has led a delegation to China to resolve South Africa's current rail crisis. Now that delegation met its Chinese counterparts to talk about the delivery of locomotives and spare parts which were being withheld by the rail equipment manufacturer CRRC Locomotive Company. It comes after a 54 billion rand contract it entered into with Transnet was nullified. Let's get an update on that and other developments at TFR with the Chief Commercial Officer Mungin Gosimaba. So thank you for joining us in studio this afternoon. Let's start with that increased uh, capability that you have uh, created uh, for the exportation of manganese. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Thank you Rafiwa and a good afternoon to you. Uh, we have uh, engaged in a project uh, to enable 1.5 million tons of export manganese uh, capacity through extending a loop, a passing loop, uh, in one of our rail uh, networks within the Hotazel area in the Northern Cape. Uh, what that will do for us uh, is, of course, given the pressure of demand for manganese exports, is it will create a, a capacity for us to enable four additional trains that will be able to move uh, to our ports for export markets. Mm, and of course, this is an exciting development for the economy uh, because there is great revenue potential there. But also, it does include a mix of businesses that operate within uh, the manganese mining space. Uh, tell us about the revenue potential, but also the opportunities that it's now opened up for other players in the industry. Absolutely. So for the economy, you're looking at about 4.4 billion rands in foreign earning opportunities for the country. Now remember, if you are manganese um, uh, as a country, we sit with 80% of the world's reserves. Yet due to uh, uh, capacity constraints on rail, uh, we have not been able to fully uh, optimize what we are able to take out of the country. Uh, much as that is the case, this, a project like this uh, enables us to then maximize on capturing that market share that we always uh, have targeted as a country. And for that reason, 4.4 billion rands of foreign earnings is a potential. But also, just to uh, give a bit of a snapshot uh, of where manganese comes from, uh, about 12 years ago, we used to export 5 million tons of manganese. Today, we sit at about 16 million tons through projects of this nature that have been enabled in the past. So we continue in that trajectory as, a, as Transnet in enabling, enabling more uh, manganese volumes being exported out of the country. Mm. Um, what about the completion of the uh, loop extension? Uh, what do you foresee and what is it that you are uh, uh, communicating to those who need uh, that particular line? So the project has commenced and we are anticipating completion by end of uh, June for enablement by 1st of July. Uh, this is work that has started uh, some two months ago already and we are m moving full force to enable uh, the current manganese exporters to leverage of the current markets uh, in manganese. So we're looking at 1st of July as the start date for the new capacity. Mm. Very exciting times, but uh, you did mention earlier on that there are some constraints uh, that still exist. A lot of it got to do with uh, uh, the infrastructure issues, but also the locomotives and the spares that uh, you so desperately need. Give us some context into this trip that was taken on by Minister Praveen Gordon and what it is that exactly that he wanted to get out uh, of uh, the rail company. So as you would know, and as you had mentioned earlier, uh, we procured 1,064 locomotives uh, across uh, the board, uh, of which quite a sizable portion was from CRRC in China. Uh, with uh, the issues uh, of the procurement um, irregular irregularities that were identified, um, uh, the process uh, to procure those locomotives was um, suspended, and as a result, uh, we do not have China, uh, CRRC in particular, uh, as a supplier of spares in order to enable us to keep the locomotives moving. What that does is, uh, in, a, in a long run, uh, our fleet of available locomotives continues to shrink. Um, I think, Rufio, last time I spoke to you, we were sitting at 184 mm. locomotives that were not available for our use. That number has since grown up to 194 already by 10. Uh, in a short space of time. So the longer we take, of course, to resolve this, uh, the more or the less locomotives we have available at our disposal. So the trip uh, uh, to China, uh, much as DP will speak mostly around that, uh, was with the minister's uh, intent to 
um, um, intervene in enabling uh, CRRC to come to the party in supplying us with the necessary spares and also supplying the remainder of the locomotives that were not supplied. Mm, but how will they do that then? Because uh, part of the reason that that contract was nullified is that they weren't complying with some of the obligations uh, that were required by SARS. Is this something that has since changed? So, we, uh, of course, the uh, minister and uh, government at large will engage more around that. But what we as Transnet have done is we've gone back to CRRC for over the last uh, couple of months up to December. We went back to renegotiate some of the terms that would have been regarded as irregular and we've, uh, we were ready, in fact, uh, to execute a new agreement that captures uh, terms around uh, supply uh, of spares, uh, maintenance, and of course the remainder of the locomotives. So the contract that we are seeking to, uh, to put in effect now has been tested insofar as its ability to meet uh, um, um, I mean procurement requirements. And for that reason, the engagements are then to say, how do we bring them back into um, um, economic activity in the country? So, of course, uh, the minister at DPE and uh, government at large uh, will pronounce more around that as to what needs to, to, I mean, to be effected for that to be in place. Mm. And this is quite important. And you've broken, down, uh, you've broken this down to us uh, before very briefly uh, that uh, it is better to have the parts and the locos come through from CRRC than it is from the call for suppliers that you have put out a couple of months ago simply because of the time frame in which uh, the restoration of these locos can happen and that we can get the trains moving again. So uh, maybe just break that down for us as opposed to a supplier that you've called for over the last few months and a CRRC uh, meeting uh, the agreement that you hope will finally be signed. Absolutely, Rufiwa. Um, with the current uh, locomotives that are out uh, of production, uh, if we get the CRRC parts uh, into the country, that will enable us to immediately see uh, some of the locos being brought back into production. In the space of three months, we'll have quite a sizable portion of that fleet already back in production. And within a space of 12 months, uh, of course, majority of the fleet will be uh, active again. Uh, as opposed to a process that we've started, that in the event that we do not find each other with CRRC, uh, we've gone out uh, in the open market to find an alternate uh, engineering uh, OEM that will re-engineer the parts that we require. What that will take, because now you are looking at people that will take the parts, go and study them and redesign and then, of course, re-engineer. You're looking at it, nothing less than 24 months, uh, up to 36 months for us to get the first part, which means as the locals continue to break down, you are looking at a much worse situation if we go with that option. But of course, in the absence of the Chinese uh, solution, we will, we will then be forced to sort of take that option. And of course, uh, it will be detrimental to the potential revenue that we could have. But if we are able to, as you say, in about three months to start to see uh, some fleet movement, very encouraging for the economy indeed. Thank you very much uh, for joining us in the studio. That is uh, Transnet Freight Rail's Chief Commercial Officer, Bongin Gosimaba. So giving us an update um, on developments around the exports on manganese, but also other developments on the locomotives that are so desperately needed to transport uh, important resources.